Hello, welcome to this step-by-step -step guide in how to use MATLAB system identification toolbox in order to estimate a transfer function from a random input signal. First of all, I'm going to simulate the system using Simulink. Normally, you would get this data by measurements from your process, from your sensors and your actuators. What I'm doing here is I want to estimate this transfer function from a random input number. So, let's look at the transfer function. You can use any arbitrary transfer function you want. Here, I'm using a second order system. And the output is going to a scope. And I want to export this output back to the workspace and I name this variable output and save it as an array. Let's look at the, the input. The input here is a uniform random number. You can find this block under sources in, li in the library. Now let's look at the details here. You can specify the minimum and maximum n random number you want to generate. Now the guideline for choosing this in practice is that it has to be higher than your signal to noise ratio so it would actually excite per per excite perturbation in your transfer function and at the same time shouldn't be so high because normally you would run this test online so on top of the inputs of the real inputs to the system what about the sampling time the choice of sampling time is of course should be consistent with the Nyquist frequency of the system and five times or five, it's a rough guideline but it's a five times higher than your rise time now let's run this Okay, when we run it, we see the input and output has been saved to the workspace. If you look, you're going to find that this is just a random input signal, a succession of random numbers. The output would also be random because the input was just random input. Now, we go back to MATLAB and we extract the data. As you can see, the input has two columns, but we are only interested in the second column, which represents the data itself, because the first column is just the timestamps. So, let's call our input x. It's going to be the second column of the data. And we do the same for the output. Let's call the output y. Now, if you look at the workspace, you're going to find that you have two vectors, x and y. And these vectors are what you're going to use in your system identification toolbox. Now, how do we open the system identification toolbox? If you look on the top menu, you're going to find under apps, system identification. Depending on the version of MATLAB you're going to use, Depending on the version of MATLAB you're going to use, the icon could be different. So we click on it. Starting up. Now this is the graphical user interface of the system identification toolbox. As you can see, it provides a step-by-step -step guide in order how to reach your model, from data to model. All you have to do is follow these arrows. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the data. When you click, there are different types of data you can import. You can estimate your transfer function from time domain data, which is the most simplest way because that's how data are measured. Or you can also estimate a transfer function from a frequency spectrum. So since our data is time domain data, I'm going to click here. I'm going to open a new dialog the input is X. This has to be the same name as it is on the workspace. 
our output is y and the data name is let's call it simulation you can call it whatever name you want now here it's important to specify the starting time so that's zero and the sampling interval should be the same as the one we used earlier in our model so that would be 0 0.05 of course the more you you want to know about the data the more you can add but this suffice for now so we import the data we specify the starting time and the sampling time you press import you get more um, options here if you want to see a time plot of the data you just imported which is the same as we saw earlier in the simulink or you can see the data spectrum yeah. now next is pre-processes. This gives you the option to detrain the data or uh, filter out unwanted data because as I said earlier this test is sometimes performed on top of the daily operation of the process. Okay? So if you have the process was working at say a level of 5 and you want to detrain the data because you added the noise on top of that 5 you can use that in pre-processes. Once you, after you pre-process the data in any way you want, I'm going to move to estimate. When you click this, you're going to see a lot of different types of models. Do you want to obtain a transfer function model, or a state space model, or a process model, and that will take you to further options, or a polynomial mo until the end. What we're interested here now is a transfer function model. And then you click on one of these. Now, the more information you know about your process, the easier and the more accurate your fit is going to become. So, well, in this case, I already know that I have a second order system with no zeros. And I want a continuous time transfer function. If you press that, you're going to get a Z domain uh, transfer function. Do you have an input and output delay? You can add that here. If you look at estimator options, sometimes you know a range in which your poles are going to be. And then you can specify that also here. Now, the initial condition I specify as zero, and I press estimate. Now the estimation algorithm is working. As you can see, it takes iterations in order to complete. Now, I want to remain here a little bit and explain something. As it works in iterations, if you want to understand what the meaning of these iterations are, I recommend you a book by Karel Kaysman. It's called System Identification and it's published by Springer. What, what you're interested in is the last after the estimation is complete how fitting the estimate is to the real data and here I have a 99.97 percent and FPE refers to the final prediction error uh, I'm not going to go further into that you can also find that in the book by Caseman system identification you can find the theory behind that now we close this and as you see it appeared here as a transfer function when I right click on it, it gives me what the transfer function that I had before. And now let's compare that to the transfer function we had in Simulink. A gain of 10, and it's here 9.994. S square is S square. 5S is 4.997 and 8 is 7.996 so this result is actually quite um, fitting okay what's going to be different from what I did just here and what you're going to do in practice is that so you sometimes you don't even know the order of your system that's why if you go to the it gives you a chance to estimate more and more models 
for instance if I want to estimate another one I double click over here and then I estimate with different number of poles and zeros and then I can judge the accuracy of my fit based on the results that I get so this is a nutshell how to use the system identification toolbox thank you very much